Shabbat Shalom from Temple Concord. This week our Torah portion talks about the eternal light, the Ner Tamid that we've all seen that sits in front of our sanctuary above the ark. But more important, I think, than that light is the presence of each of us. The light reminds us of our eternal God and it reminds us of our eternal people. But the truth is that it isn't the light that is so significant because the light is representative of something bigger. The light represents us. And if we can figure out a way to connect ourselves with a tradition that stretches back, way back, thousands of years, and it's going to stretch forward for thousands of years, then we ourselves become the eternal light. And we become that light that shines, that says, this is significant, this is important, this is holy. And I think that that's what our tradition is driving us towards. It isn't so much to have a light hanging over the ark, to say this is a sacred spot or that these words are from God, but rather it's for each of us to look in the mirror and see that we are connected to something greater, to see that we are part of something bigger, and that the light that we shine, the light that springs forth from our own souls and comes out of our eyes and our mouths and comes out of who we are and how we interact with others, that's the light that's holy, that's eternal, and it continues and gives to others for all time. So easily we talk about life as a finite flame that it burns and glows and then too easily, too soon it fades away. The truth is, though, that life well lived is an eternal flame because life well lived is a life that touches others and allows each of us to live on in others. And in that way, our lives are not a flame that burns out in gutters. Rather, ours are lives of light that burns eternally, that continues going long after our physical bodies have left the earth, but continues growing and glowing just as our souls do. And it's that message that our Torah is bringing us this Shabbat, to remember how important each of us is to the greater good and how much each of us can give in our own unique and varied ways and how holy each of those special gifts is. Our Shabbat services this Friday evening will be at 6 o'clock. Our adult choir will be performing, so I hope you'll join us and become gleeful. Uh, Saturday morning we have services at 11, preceded of course by Torah study at 10 and text study at 9. Our fifth graders will be participating in Shabbat morning services. We have a Shabbat a Shabbaton program Saturday immediately following services, a chocolate Seder. I promise this is the best tasting Seder you'll ever go to, largely because there's almost no matzah involved, but also because it's all chocolate. How can that be bad? Uh, and then the coming week, uh, we have religious school and all of our usual programs. Our Seder is just about a week and a half away, uh, two weeks away, a week away, depending on what day you're watching this. Uh, we are joining together with Hillel, and we are having a Seder in the dome. Let my people go orange. This will be the largest Seder ever held in a dome. It will also be the first time there is a Shabbat service ever held in the Carrier Dome. Uh, I'll be leaving the Shabbat service at beginning at 6 o'clock, and then the Seder will begin shortly thereafter, led largely by the Hillel students. promises to be an extraordinarily exciting evening for all of us and for our community, and it's a big deal that we get to come together and celebrate and to be in the Dome. Uh, so I hope you'll join us for that. For now, though, spend this Shabbat recognizing the eternal glow that comes from you and those with whom you live. Celebrate that special and sacred light and see how it eternally lives on, not just in who you are, but in those who came before you and how it will live on after you in the people you've touched. Shabbat Shalom for now. Look forward to seeing you at the temple.